Hello there, I am the Puppy Turtle. I'm making another response to Hatred42. Um, this is a response to his response to my video. Um, it tackle four issues. First off, is the he complained that I didn't address the poop references he mentioned in the comments. That's because first off, I'm not familiar with them. Secondly, poop does exist, and you know that's I don't. I don't see the absurdness of mentioning it any more than there is absurdness in mentioning the existence of the pyramids or wind or something like that. I mean, I don't see why it holds special status in your mind. That's weird. Um, oh, by the way, I do want to... Correct. One thing I saw in your description, you said a link to her video, I'm a guy. I, I want to make, I want to correct you on that. And in general, poop references fall into a few categories. First off, there's the ones that are referencing it as the greatest humiliation one can possibly suffer is being forced to eat their own crap. It's, that really explains I think all of the three ones you mentioned, there's also another type of poop reference, which is um, referring to a sanitation law in Leviticus. Uh, one of the poop references in Leviticus, and the only one I knew about before I saw this video, is um, saying that when you have to crap, you take a shovel, you go out away from the city, you dig a hole and then cover what comes forth from you, is the wording they use. And that actually, I think, is evidence for the Bible's validity, that it would know that you should probably not leave your craft out in the open. That's basically a sanitation law, you know, like the ones we have today. Um, now regarding your more serious points. First, the wall of Jericho. Now, when you say that sound waves couldn't possibly have knocked it down, I noticed in the video you seem to think that there is just a generic object that is a wall. That's kind of like going into a bar and asking for a beer. You know, there is no beer brand beer. You have to actually ask for a Budweiser or something like that. And... <sighs> There is no single unified object that can be declared to be a wall, just the objective standard that is a wall. I'd imagine in the experiment you described, I'd imagine it was not meant specifically to deal with the wall of Jericho. I'd also imagine that they may have used modern bricks, or another modern material kept together with something made of another modern material, either modern cement, or if they use metal or steel, it may be modern screws. You mentioned stadiums, how no matter how much the people scream in there, they don't, the stadiums don't fall. Well, that's because stadiums are usually made of modern day metals. And also, they are maintenance very, very well because you know, they have to not only support the screens, but also the weight of that. And what we know about the Wall of Jericho, we don't know exactly what it was made of, or at least I'm not sure. I don't know, you may know. There may be. But what we don't know is the exact state of decay in which it was, because you cannot objectively say it had to have been at least have, it has to have had at least this much structural integrity. No, you, you can't do that. And in general, when explaining how it could have happened, you know, I... In explaining how it could have happened, I just have to give you something reasonable. I don't feel I have to actually build a replica of the Wall of Jericho and knock it down with trumpets in front of you or even in front of the camera. 
So, also, you seem to forget about one thing, sir, resonant frequencies. God specified exactly what material to make the trumpets out of. And that gives me a hint that maybe he was getting at a resonant frequency. And maybe that is why the marching could have weakened it. Resonant frequencies. Then there's the flood of Noah. You did not say anything about Noah being unable to fit the animals on the ark. So I'm going to assume that you accept my explanation of that. You seem to have actually misunderstood what I said. I was not giving convoluted explanations of how Mount Everest could have been successfully covered. I offered two potential explanations, and the main one, and the one I will reiterate here, is that Mount Everest was not there. The Bible says that at the end of the flood, the mountains arose and the valleys fell down. If you've ever heard of the hydroplate theory, it, I think, explains it very well. I'm going to ask you to please research that. Also, there's the lifespan. See, all of your objections about how, no, they couldn't have lived that long, they couldn't have lived past 150, nobody could, this assumes things before the flood, when they were living that long, were exactly the same as they are today. You see... Before the flood, there was so much more oxygen, conditions were radically different, very radically different. And, in fact, they were so radically different that they could have had a slower maturation period. The constriction could have been slower. Well, you make some serious assumptions. First off, we don't even know that before the flood, they did not have medical care. I mean, if they did, and if it was destroyed in a worldwide flood, we cannot conclude that because we don't find hospitals, like ruins of ancient hospitals, first off, we can't conclude that we would be able to identify one if we did. And we cannot say that because we have not found it, it does not exist. Now, I realize that the burden of proof would be on me to prove it. I'm not saying completely that it's proven. I'm merely suggesting it. And actually, there is evidence, which is, if you've ever heard of the Ica stones, they appear to, de some of them appear to depict amputations, brain surgery, complex medical procedures. They may well have had medical care. They may well have had what we would deem seemingly modern technology before the flood. I do not categorically rule that out, though I don't swear by it. And, again, more oxygen, better diet, especially the more oxygen, the more air pressure. If you've ever heard of hyperbaric oxygen chambers, and this, by the way, addresses the problem of the healing, you say that a skin scrape would have been fatal. Yes, in today's conditions, without medical care, a skin scrape can be fatal. However, they weren't under today's conditions. And when there's more oxygen and more air pressure, it means people heal faster. And if they heal faster, you know, the straight heals faster, the infection has gotten rid of faster. They're treating all kinds of things with hyperbaric oxygen. They're treating, like, leprosy, cerebral palsy. They're being treated by hyperbaric oxygen. I think even cancer it can help with. And I'm going to ask you to not do something that you kind of did do with the other video, which is um, I felt like you kind of picked and chose. And almost, you know, you said I came close to strawmanning you. You, I think, maybe came a little closer to strawmanning me. And, by the way, I am familiar with logical fallacies. I study them pretty well. I am currently looking for a site, a good source that contains all of them. I can't, I can't find a single site or book or anything. I mean, I've, I've only looked for really websites, but I can't find a single website that seems to actually list all of them. If you would link me one of those, that would be great. I, could study them more effectively. Yeah, I'd like to just 
mention something. Um, I, I guess I, I thought I was more ready than I was for the insulting comments. I have so far, I think, blocked three people. Because, like I said, if you're just going to comment, you're an idiot. I think I, you're a total idiot. I think I blocked that person. I, I did leave the comments up. But I blocked that person. And just, in general, yeah. And, um, uh, thanks for, re thanks for responding to my video. I didn't really expect that. And I'm glad you did, because, you know, the more I converse with atheists, the more views I'll get. And my goal is to eventually reach the level of guys like Jesus Freak 777 and eventually even Venom Fang X. You know? I, no, I, I'd be honored if Thunderfoot would be willing to come up with a fancy nickname and declare, and declare his fiveness by doing the same thing to me that he did to Venom Thing. <laughs> also, you mentioned that some networks, some TV networks provide an quote-unquote unbiased worldview. Well, first off, I'd like to say there's no such thing. Like, there really is no such thing as an unbiased person. Everyone's biased. And those of you out there nodding your heads what you're really thinking to yourself is, yeah, everyone but me is biased. There's this thing called the bias blind spot. Your own biases actually keep you from seeing your own biases. You know? I mean, I think I'm completely unbiased. I, intellectually, I know I'm not, but, like, truly, I believe myself to basically be unbiased because... My biases keep me from seeing the fact that I am indeed biased. Everyone's biased. Though I can see what you mean of those networks never explicitly say that there is no God. They present an evolutionary worldview. They, let me put it this way, a person that watches those programs is going to come away possibly having their Christian faith destroyed. It, particularly if they were a young Arthur, like me, and like Venom Fang, and like, you'd be surprised how many. You'd be surprised how many of us there are. So, yeah. See ya.